Joshua Harris has kissed marriage goodbye and a whole lot more. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Apptrepreneur and welcome to my vlogging channel. This is a channel that I, I don't update frequently, I probably should. I, I kind of consider it more like a personal diary. I talk about life, the universe, personal feelings, and this topic that we're going to talk about today is definitely going to be an interesting one because I'm going to be opening up about a lot of my, a lot about myself that you probably are not aware of. And it's actually something that I'm kind of glad that I don't um, have a lot of followers on this channel because I'm kind of interested to know what everyone's going to respond to it, and yet I'm kind of afraid to share it. So here's, here's I guess I'll start with this. Um, I think I made it pretty clear on my channel. Most people know, know this about me, but I am in fact a Christian. I go to church every Sunday. I read the Bible whenever I can. I pray before food. I pray during the middle of the week. I praise God whenever my tooth isn't hurting, and I pray that he helps um, it heal until the dentist can actually make time to get it fixed, you know, things like that. That I have had big issues with God where I have doubted that he's even there, particularly when my sister-in-law, Crystal, died on her honeymoon, and there are times when it's so obvious that he's there that I get frustrated with myself that I ever doubted him. And while I do believe his love is unwavering, it is pure, and it is true, that doesn't mean that the teachings that of pastors always is. And one of my downsides with him was in, res in regards to a book that I read about nine years ago, 2010, called I Kiss Dating Goodbye. Now, I was interested in in a, in a woman who um, ultimately nothing ever worked out, out with. Um, and here's the thing. I kind of felt like, you know, I wanted, if I uh, wanted, I had had like a very bad spotty um, dating record. And I was wondering if I was doing something wrong. And I heard about this revolutionary book called I Kiss Dating Goodbye by Joshua Harris. It had like a neat little cover. It um, shows him in like a suit with like the hat tipping down. It was, you know, actually a pretty cool cover for a Christian book, if we're being completely honest. And I read the book. I probably read it within a week, which is, um, you know, a little bit faster than how I typically, when I typically read a self-help book. I usually read self-help books very, very slowly, but I, I really wanted to read this one. And you know, I heard that it would, like, change my life. It would change my whole perspective on things. And in a way, it did change my life, although not for the reasons that I thought it would. Now, before we continue, I will give, like, a little mini review of the book, which I no longer have anymore. I think I sold it for 50 cents at a garage sale. And kind of tell you what things in the book I agreed with and which ones I disagreed with. First of all, I did agree that if you were going to date, it should be towards marriage. It shouldn't just be dating for the sake of dating. I, I actually did agree agree with that stance. And I have I say that because I have known people who have dated just to date for years. And it's funny, it's like in, in some cases, and I'm not going to name any names, obviously, but deep down, they know that this relationship will not work. They are fundamentally very different people. They don't agree on certain lifestyles. They don't agree on certain faiths. Sometimes they have a lack of faith while the other person has faith. They, some people believe in marriage. Some people don't believe in marriage. And But they don't want to be alone, so they date. And I never wanted to do that. I wanted to date with a purpose, so I agreed with that. I also, this is going to surprise you, I agree with the abstinence thing. I do believe God has made sex for marriage and for your spouse. And I am going to be very happy to tell my kids that there was no one else that I had had sex with other than their mother, which is going to be Katie. I'm going to be able to look at them with a straight face, tell them that, and it will be true. Because I didn't sleep around with other other women. I, I waited for her, and I am definitely looking forward to the wedding night. Uh, it should be a very interesting experience, I, would, I should say. And... The reason I believe that, not only because the Bible says so, but because I have seen, again, friends who were promiscuous and who slept around. And by the way, I'm not saying that that makes them bad people. It clearly does not. That is not what I'm saying at all. But they have admitted that they struggle sometimes because 
They remember the other women. They remember the experiences. They sometimes compare their wives to those other people. I never wanted to be in that situation. I just never did. So I do agree with that. And I believe that God should be the center of the relationship as a Christian. Um, I know some of you who are not believers out there would say, well, I don't think God needs to be in the center of the relationship. You know, that that's fine if that's what you believe. I'm a Christian. I believe that. And those are the things about the book I did believe. But that's also about where I kind of stopped believing because I think that stuff was, for the most part, pretty biblical. And you could find that in the Bible, which I already had a copy of. The stuff that wasn't in the Bible was the stuff that I started having an issue with. Because what Joshua Harris did was he took what was essentially a system and he completely reconstructed it. He like said like the way we're dating doesn't work. And so he created a system and what he did was he took one system that didn't work and just replaced it with another system that wasn't going to work. Now, there are people who have different, you know, lots of opinions on what he says. I'm going to share some of mine. Some people have said that, you know, he was telling women what to do and what not to do with their bodies. Um, actually, I don't really think that's the case. He was also kind of telling the men what not to do with their, their bodies. The book was honestly very sex obsessed, um, despite actually telling people not to have sex and to not even have a kiss before your wedding day, which I completely agree with, by the way, disagree with, by the way. Um, you know, kissing is like a great way to get to know people. Um, you know, I don't th see anything wrong with kissing. Um, it promised like an uh, like the best sex life ever. If you just followed these rules, which um, is not guaranteed. I know that. Um, and he also discouraged like group, like single dating. Like, you know, you had to go to the parents to ask permission for, for you to, uh, pr to, pursue their daughter. And once they said yes, you could never go like a one-on-one -on -one date. Always group dates, always family dates. I, I resented that for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, parents can be very unreasonable when it comes to their daughters. Um, they don't always like, some people just don't, don't like the idea of their daughter dating anyone, which that creates a problem if this is how you're going to do it. And then there's in some cases where it's like the parents have like an idea of who they want their daughter to date, but the daughter doesn't love that person and truly in the long run might be happier with someone else who they look down upon and they can't even see that that would be a good man for their daughter. So, you know, I don't know why you need to get the parents involved, but then it's like you need to always be in like a group setting that that didn't make any sense to me because it was like, well, um, <laughs> How should I put this? People act very differently in groups compared to one-on-ones. And as someone who is like extremely shy and antisocial to a certain extent, that was never going to work. I needed to get to know them on a very personal level. And so there you have it. I didn't agree with that. And the more I read it, like, you know, don't write letters to people. It wastes a lot of stamps and it just leads to heartbreak which he doesn't know that there's a lot of lo long distance relationships that turn into marriages all the time so after i read the book i honestly wasn't gonna give it much thought i kind of found out that he was 21 when he wrote it and that made a lot of sense and i was like you know what no just just no i i, I was not a fan i was not a believer in the um well Again, outside of, you know, staying pure until marriage, I was not a fan of the Josh Harris um, marriage gospel or whatever the heck they called it. Interestingly, it would not be the only time that I dealt with it because the church that I go to is actually a, si a sister church of the Sovereign Grace Church, which Joshua Harris was the pastor of at the time. And so apparently this book was being read by virtually everyone in the church and... I actually found a lot of resistance from some of the, the women there. Uh, there were a couple in particular that I, after this first person didn't quite work out, that I did want to explore the possibility of a relationship with. And um, that didn't happen. And it didn't happen not because we didn't get along. We clearly got along. And it didn't happen because they weren't romantically interested. Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. We don't know. The reason it didn't work out is because... With these girls, they did not want to be friends because of I Kiss Dating Goodbye. 
like I'd invite them to do something and they would say, well, it has to be this way. Like, well, why? Because it said so in this book. And, and they were true believers in this book. And this happened a couple times. And after a while, I really started to resent, resent I kissed dating goodbye. I, I saw it as more of an intrusion and it was not biblical. I even like asked them things like, well, what about this thing in the book? Like at the beginning of the book, there's this passage where it talks about a man and a woman getting married. And he's saying his vows like, I'm going to love you forever. There will be no one else. And then all the ghosts of girlfriends pasts, essentially. So I'm like, oh, remember when you promised me this? Remember when you promised me this? And Harris's illusion for this was that when you fall in love with people, and by the way, this wasn't even just talking about the sex. Like, uh, this was just, you know, falling in love. Like, you gave away a piece of your heart. And if you do that so many times, when you find your one person that you're supposed to be with, how much of your heart will you have left? I thought that was total horse donkey. Total horse donkey. Because at that point, it's like, well, what happens if you have kids then? Do you not? And you fall in love with your kids. Not, not in the romantic way, of course, but does that mean when you have like a second kid, you don't love that kid as much as the first? Does that mean you love your wife less because of the kid? It didn't make any sense. And yet people at the church really believed it. Now, this was nine years ago. And in those years, no one in the church really reads the book anymore. And in fact, Joshua Harris did a documentary called I Kissed, or I think it was called I Survived, I Kissed Dating Goodbye. And he basically came to the conclusion that while he agreed with some of the beliefs in the book still, it overall was very flawed and many, much of it was not biblical. And he asked for the book to be withdrawn. And I actually thought that was like very admirable thing to do. And at that point, I finally forgave Joshua Harris for everything he did. And then there was a few bombshells about him and it becomes problematic. Now, here's his Instagram post that definitely got me started on this. Um, this is him and his wife, uh, Shannon, who uh, he ended up writing about his courtship with her in um, a future book, um, Boy Meets Girl. And he wrote, we're writing to share the news that we are separating and will continue our life together as friends. In recent years, some significant changes have taken place in both of us. It is with sincere love of, for one another and understanding of our unique story as a couple that we are moving forward with this decision. We hope to create a generous and supportive future for each other and for our, th excuse me, our three amazing children in the years ahead. Thank you for your understanding and for respecting our privacy during a difficult time. Now, I had a few reactions to this, as you can probably imagine. First of all, um, this is clearly a PR message. Like, this is about as impersonal of an announcement as you can get. And we will find out why in a later post, but I frankly looked at this and it's like, you get the sense right away, like, you know, what are you hiding? What are you hiding? So that was admittingly my first reaction. Now here's my second reaction. And admittingly, the second reaction should have been my first. I felt heartbroken that, um, that it didn't work out. Not because I wanted his book to be validated or anything like that, but because it's just, it's an ugly thing when you see people get divorced. And it's sad. I've seen more divorces I can count. And, you know, it's always a very heartbreaking thing to witness. And some people might say, well, this is why you don't get married, so you don't have to get divorced. No, it's just as heartbreaking when I see someone who's been dating for 12, 15, 20 years, and then they decide they don't want to be together anymore. And it's like, it's just sad all the time. And then the third thing, and this was after I read some articles, I felt a little bad for Joshua Harris. Because obviously, here's the thing, a couple getting divorced is typically not newsworthy. It's normally not worth talking about. But a lot of people... Held, held really strong and negative opinions towards Joshua Harris. And, I, and I, I understand why. I was one of those people. Because Joshua Harris's book did, you know, like in, in, at least at the time, and I'll, I'll elaborate why I don't feel this way at the end of this video. At the time, I felt like his book had intruded on my potential happiness. Like, you know, maybe I could have gotten married a heck of a lot sooner had this book not existed. Maybe... You know, I would have been on more dates had this book not existed. Clearly, all the women in the church, 
all the girls in the church were uh, reading this thing and following it as gospel. Um, and it actually even resulted in some friendships like falling apart because it was so... I mean, I argued it so much to them. Like, this is not biblical. It really isn't. And it was like I was attacking them. It was like I was attacking their belief system. And they, they actually kind of stopped being friends. So I blamed for a long time Joshua Harris and I kissed dating goodbye. Which uh, was wrong for me to do. And I, again, I will explain why near the end. Now, before we get to the end, there was an update. And I didn't realize I would be talking about this. But if you go to his Instagram, he has like a follow-up post. And this, by the way, is, um, is by the way, the far more concerning one, as far as I'm concerned. And it, I, I feel, now I feel truly concerned for him. He says, my heart is full of gratitude. I wish you could see all the messages people sent me after the announcement of my divorce. They are expressions of love, though they are saddened or even strongly disapprove of the decision. I am learning that no group has the market cornered on grace, which, um, yeah, I wish uh, you can kind of see where this is probably going. This week, I received grace from Christians, atheists, evangelicals, uh, evangelicals, straight people, LGBTQ people, and everyone in between. Of course, there have also been strong words of rebuke from religious people, while not always pleasant. I know they are seeking to love me. There have also been spiteful, hateful comments that angered and hurt me. And admittingly, considering this book did affect a lot of people's lives, some people like skipped their high school dance and stuff. Um, probably, I, I actually like one of the persons that I know is still single. Like, I believe she's still um, trying to follow the I kiss dating goodbye method and it's not working and she's extremely frustrated and angry about it. Um, and because we're not friends anymore, I would like to know what she thinks about this. However, I know that's probably not going to happen. The information that was left out of our announcement is that I have undergone a massive shift in regard to my faith in Jesus. The popular phrase for this is deconstruction. The biblical phrase is falling away. By all the measurements that I have for defining a Christian, I am not a Christian. Many people tell me that there is a different way to practice faith, and I want to remain open to this, but I'm not there now. Martin Luther said that the entire life of believers should be repentance. There's beauty in that sentiment regardless of your view of God. I have lived in repentance for the past several years, which, by the way, I, I believe he has. I mean, he has been basically doing an apology tour for several years, and he made that a full documentary, which he's given away for free, and he probably could have made money on that one. And he asked his publishers to pull books that were wildly successful and still making him a lot of money. Granted, they might have pulled it anyway when you, we see what he's about to announce, but anyway. Uh, Repenting of my self-righteousness, my fear-based approach to life, the teaching of my books, my views of the women in the church, and my approach to parenting, to name a few. But I specifically want to add to this list now, to the LGBTQ community, I want to say that I am sorry for the views that I taught in my books and as a pastor regarding sexuality. I regret standing against marriage equality for not affirming you and your place in the church and for any ways that my writing and speaking contributed to a culture of exclusion and bigotry. I hope you forgive me. Now that's a lot to unpack, and the, honestly, if I start talking about that, that would open up a big can of worms, but um, I do agree that um, I do agree that he should apologize for not feeling gay people welcome at church because it went beyond sensible um, uh, sensible opposition to the lifestyle. To my Christian friends, I am grateful for your prayers. Don't take it personally if I don't immediately return your calls. I can't join in your morning. I don't view this moment negatively. I feel very much alive and awake and surprisingly hopeful. I believe with my sister Julian that all shall be well and all manner shall, shall be well. Um, and Anyway, there's like a lot, um, a lot of people have very mixed feeling, um, about this. So, like, you know, including this one, you allotted teams of the 90s and Apology 2, a big one, your idiotic book, and ridiculous theories on dating ruined lives and robbed opportunities that can never be reclaimed. Youth pastors rammed your book's content down throats and poisoned parents' guidelines on teen relationships. Karma will catch up with you. You are shameful. Did he respond to this one? 
I'm kind of curious if he responded to this one. Um, he didn't. Well, that's fine. I, he gets a lot of those things. Now, what's interesting about um, Jen Cornia, Cornia, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that, but Jen, is like, I used to be in this position. I used to believe this way. I believe that this book had ruined chances I will never get back. Not because I was, and I wasn't even following the book. I, I thought the book was bumpkiss, but with the exception of a few core ideas, but other people did believe it was true. And um, I felt like I had missed out on some opportunities. Maybe some people had passed me by. Who knows? But here's why I want to talk about this. And it was even before I knew this. Like, if he has truly walked away from his faith, then I hope he finds his way back. I hope everyone finds their way to Jesus because I do believe he is the way and I, I want people I like to show up in heaven. I, I really do. It's it's not even that I want to ram my religious down, religion down your throat. It's just I truly believe it's there. And I believe when you reject it, then there might you will be missing out on some great things after death. And I believe you miss out on some good things in life too. Um, although certainly Christians don't have the market cornered on a good life. Um, I have some atheist friends who don't believe in God, and they, <laughs> frankly, make a lot more money and have more things than I do, so, you know, you know, God doesn't play fa favorites, like, I don't believe in this whole prosperity gospel thing. Um, the, uh, divorce is definitely sad. I, I believe she has walked away from her faith, too, and I find that very interesting that, basically, they both walked away from faith and decided to get a divorce at that point. That, I think, is very telling for so many reasons. But here's the main reason I wanted to talk about this on my vlogging channel. Because as I'm reflecting upon this, ironically, I still see God's work in all of this in my life. And some of you might not agree with me. In fact, some of you probably don't even believe. And so therefore, you're just making fun of this whole video. And that's fine. I'm not making this video to argue with anyone on this. Because I don't believe anyone ever gets to heaven because they lost a debate which is why I think Christian debates with scientists are so stupid, to be honest. Like, are we going to get to heaven and say, like, oh, so how'd you get here? It's like, well, I lost a debate, and now I'm stuck here. Like, no, that's you either believe or you don't. But I was not happy to hear Josh Harris and his wife are getting divorced. I think it's very sad. I'm even more saddened that Josh Harris has walked away from God. And I wish I had been praying for him more. I wish I hadn't been part of the mob, because the truth is... By those people um, pretty much rejecting me because they wanted to follow this book showed that we weren't right in the first place. We weren't right because I'm not that rigid when it comes to rules and regulations. I play a little loosey-goosey with some things. And if they were going to take a book that I fundamentally disagreed with and take it so seriously, that is not someone I wanted to marry in the first place. For that matter, there was like a lot of disappointment and I, for a while, I truly went through life felt, feeling like I deserved a wife, which I don't. I don't deserve a wife. I felt like, hey, I'm nicer than most pe people. I'm more caring than most people. Why don't I have a w wife? Like, why isn't anyone going to date me? And that was not the right way to be approaching life. That, that. I believe is an attitude that says you deserve something and I, I don't deserve anything. I, I've never felt like I should never feel like I deserve to have anything. But then here's the other thing. Because ironically, the few things that I did agree with the book ended up playing a big part in me meeting who's going to be my future wife. Because I do agree in long-term relationships. I didn't want to date just to date. So after the first date, I would always ask some serious questions. You know, what are your plans on marriage? What are your views on this? How do you feel about this? I think it scared a lot of people away because that's just... You know, they're not thinking that far ahead. And the person I met, she asked me a lot of questions on our second date, basically doing what I would do. And now she's engaged. We're engaged to one another. We're going to build a life together. And I'm not going to say that's going to be easy. I'm not going to say it's going to be perfect. And I will do everything I can to avoid a divorce. I truly will. Because I'm not getting married to get a divorce. I'm getting married to make it last. But when I think back, it's like, you know what? What I Kissed Dating Goodbye did for me, it didn't ruin my life. It didn't make me miss out on opportunities that I would have otherwise had. 
In a strange way, it was God using this to guide me towards the woman that I would want to marry. And I can look back no longer with regret and no longer with anger because God did something wonderful in my life and helped turn my life around despite I kissed dating goodbye. It's like, it, so in a strange way, he still used this book for good in my life. Now, I am truly sorry to the people who it had a very, very negative. And again, I'm one of those people that you might in some ways have considered it had a negative effect on. But I do feel God has taken care of me. And even though I have not always understood why things are happening the way they're happening or why they aren't happening sooner. Ultimately, he has answered prayers, even ones that I didn't realize I wanted answered. I really hope Joshua Harris can accept my apology for ha hating him for so long. I hope he can find his way back to, back to God and Jesus. Um, I pray that his family gets through this very ugly time intact. I hope his, his soon-to-be ex-wife, Shannon, finds some peace as well and even comes back to Christ herself. This whole situation is unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. And I, it's definitely one of those things that makes you stop and think. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be making fun of him like he kissed marriage goodbye and he kissed um, well, I, I made it part of the title, obviously, because it's a catchy title, but um, I take no pleasure in what's going on in his life. I only hope, I wish him the best, and I hope he finds what he's looking for, both him and his still-at-the-moment wife. And it's going to be interesting to read these comments, uh, the comments that are on this Instagram. But... The bottom line, I think this is why I want to talk about it. This is kind of me having to kind of publicly admit this. But Joshua Harris, look, your book clearly made some things difficult for me. It wasn't in my favor, at least what I thought. But in the long run, it did help me. And even though I think it really hurt a lot of people, God can still turn it around. I mean, I'm proof of that. Other people I know are proof of it. In fact, many people who stopped following the book end up meeting the love of their life. And at this point, they are older. They are more mature. And, you know, we're going to have to see if they stick, stay together. But if there's one thing that this proved is that there's no blueprint for perfect marriage. That's how all there is to it. So this is going to be a very interesting video to see if I get any responses on it, first of all, and what they think of it. But that's where I'm going to leave it. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly, and I, you know, I, I hope you all are having a good day out there, and please take care of one another. Have a good one.